There have been a lot of unnamed legendary ninjas in the Naruto world who did not appear in the series, but we can still assume their existence. One of them was the parent of Tsunade Senju, who was the child of the first Hokage, and this is the topic I want to talk about today. But before starting, I want to ask you all to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more. I hope you all have a great day. Let's start the video. Well, there have been a lot of mysteries behind Hashirama Senju, and I've made a lot of videos on them, specifically about his death and his off-screen battle against Kakuzu, and if you haven't already, I recommend you check it out. We know a lot of things about the personal life of Hashirama Senju, and we also know almost every family member of Hashirama, his brothers, his wife, and even his father. The only unknown people to us from his family are his mother and his child, but his mother will be the topic of another video, because today we're going to talk about his child. We don't know the gender of his child, but because of the fact that his grandson got the surname of Senju, I assume Hashirama's child was male. So, who was Tsunade's father? Well, I always wanted to know more about the three legendary Sanin in general. The original manga does not really state anything about the parents of the Sanin, with the exception of Orochimaru, whose parents were confirmed to be dead. However, this statement is still not enough. There are still a lot of mysteries behind Orochimaru's parents, and Jiraiya's novel is a very good source for that. It gives us very good information about the parents of Jiraiya and Orochimaru. However, this is not the topic of today's video. I plan on doing a separate video about the parents of Jiraiya and Orochimaru in the future, so stay tuned for that. Unlike Orochimaru, Tsunade was not orphaned, and she indeed had parents, because we know that Nawaki was quite a bit younger than Tsunade, so that means both of her parents would have been around to see Tsunade growing up. You could say that Hashirama's son was not a ninja and decided to live like a normal person, but I don't think that this is the case here. I mean, before the Fourth Great Ninja World War, it was a really dark time for the ninja world. The five great villages were constantly in war with one another. Many people were dying and they needed help in every possible way, which included kids as well. This is the reason why Kakashi, Obito, Rin, Itachi, Shisui, Hashirama and other ninja had to fight as kids in the wars. Also, according to Nagato, the Hidden Leaf was the village which started the second great ninja world war, which means it was not really a great time for the Hidden Leaf. After the first shinobi world war, the Hidden Leaf saw tremendous losses in its fighting force. Madara left the village shortly after its formation, according to the first Naruto data book. Tobirama and Hashirama died in the First Shinobi World War. The village was without its three strongest fighters, and after the First Shinobi World War, it needed help from every possible direction, and I don't think the village would let the son of Hashirama and Mito, the person who was combining Senju and Uzumaki clan's chakra, abandoning being a ninja. When you think about it, he had crazy potential. In truth, we have already seen someone like that, and that was Nagato Uzumaki. Many of you probably already know that Nagato was an Uzumaki clan member, but I don't think that most of you knew that he was a member of the Senju clan as well. The mixture of both Uzumaki and Senju clan chakras enabled him to use the Rinnegan at its fullest potential. Because of this mixture, Nagato had crazy amounts of chakra, and he was able to fight the whole Hidden Leaf village, then Sage Mode Naruto, followed by eight-tailed Kurama, and after that he still had enough chakra to revive the whole village whom he had previously defeated, and I think Hashirama's son would be the same case. I think he would be in a different league in terms of chakras and physical strength compared to his peers. He would have very big potential to inherit wood release Keke Genkai from his father, since we know that Keke Genkai are usually passed down through generations. His body would also be strong and compatible with that power, since he had the mixture of Senju and Uzumaki clans, two clans who probably have the strongest physical bodies besides the Otsutsuki clan. Since both of his parents were alive for a really long time, I think he would be trained by them. I assume that at some point he was even trained by Tobirama and Madara too, since I am sure both of them realized how much potential he really had and they did not want it to be wasted. So because of that, they were training him by themselves, similar to how Hiruzen was trained by both Hashirama and Tobirama. But in this case, Hashirama's son was taught by Madara too. I think it's not far-fetched to think that Tobirama could teach his nephew some of his signature abilities like the Flying Thunder God technique, Shadow Clone, and other forbidden techniques. I also think that he knew forbidden techniques of the Yuzumaki clan, like adamantine attacking chains, heel bite, and other sealing techniques like reaper death seal, a trigram sealing style, and tori seal. Based on all of these, we can see that he had extremely big potential, and is such a shame that we never saw him at any point in the series. We also know that because of the fact that Kushina was the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails, Naruto had inherited whiskers before becoming Jinchuriki by himself, and I assume that Mito's son also had the same, since his mother also was the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails. I think he would be a close friend of Hiruzen Sarutobi, since I assume that they were around the same age, or maybe Hashirama's son was a little older, since we know that Hiruzen had become Sensei before becoming Hokage, and he became Hokage at the age of 24, since we know that there is an 18 years gap between Hiruzen and his students, and the Sanin became Genin at the age of six. 
That means Hashirama's son was 18 years old when he became a father, and I think it's a very reasonable age during the warring era to become a parent. In any case, I'm pretty sure that they both knew about one another. One of them was probably the biggest prodigy of his generation, and the second one was the son of the god of Shinobi. I'm pretty sure that Hiruzen would have mad respect for him, because his uncle and father were his teachers, and according to the first Naruto data book, both of them sacrificed themselves for the village. It is such a shame that we never got to see the generation of Hiruzen Sarutobi. I think the only time when we saw Hiruzen Sarutobi and his gang close to their prime was during the sacrifice of Tobirama Senju, when we could see in the first Ninja World War, while being pursued by a team of 20 Kumogakure ninja, Tobirama sacrificed his life to give the others a chance to escape. Before leaving, however, he appointed Hiruzen as the third Hokage. I'm sure if they got more screen time we would be able to see the son of Hashirama Senju. But still, what happened to him? I think it's quite obvious that he did not die in the first Shinobi World War, otherwise Nawaki Senju would not be born. And I think he did not die in the second Shinobi World War either, since we know how traumatizing that war was for Tsunade. She lost her boyfriend, Dan, and her brother, Nawaki, in that war, and if his father died in the same war, I'm pretty sure we would see his death too in Tsunade's flashback. I think he died in the third Great Ninja World War, or somewhere in between that war and the beginning of Naruto's timeline. He was half Uzumaki and half Senju, and due to that he had an extremely powerful life force, which would definitely let him live during these periods. However, despite his absence, his existence was mentioned several times in the series. Firstly, his birth was mentioned by Hiruzen Sarutobi, when he was telling Minato and Kushina that when Mito was given birth, the seal nearly broke down which means that his birth was as difficult as Naruto's was. The second time when he was indirectly mentioned was during the final battle between Madara and Hashirama, when Hashirama told Madara that if anyone tried to disturb the harmony of the village, whether it would be his son, his family, or someone he considers his brother, he would not hesitate to eliminate them. In the end, in the Naruto-verse, there have been a lot of unnamed ninjas who had crazy potential but unfortunately were never shown. However, there are still some hints that we can use to determine how strong they could be. Fortunately for us, thanks to the Jiraiya novel, which is 100% canon, we know much more about the parents of Jiraiya and Orochimaru, and I plan on doing a video about that topic as well. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see it. I guess this is all for today. Like this video and subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching. Astro Jack out. Bye guys.